Between 2012 and 2020, it was the golden age of SaaS. Pretty much whatever you stuck into the ground, you poured some water on it, it was growing. And it's almost like you didn't even have to pour water on it because it was raining so much wealth that it automatically grew. And so yeah. in, a, in a situation like that, you don't really see a big change. So in those days, literally as a skill level, we didn't see a radical change if skill needed, right? I mean, like, hey, we saw the movement from cold phone calls to cold emails. We saw that, right? And we see now the trend towards more Slack, so to more uh, instant style messaging. As 2020 occurred, we saw things accelerate in particular one direction towards the online. So suddenly, you know, like events were less accessible and so on and so forth. Yeah. What we are finding today is that in this, in, you know, in this current moment in time, changes are occurring so ra rapidly that the training of like a year ago may no longer apply. Chat GPT, I don't know if you know, folks, we're talking about a product that's less than 90 days old, 90 days old, right? It came yeah. out on December 3rd or 4th or something like that. So I don't know, if, but that's like, imagine, it changed everything. Welcome, hello. My name is Eli Cohen. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Saleshood, and I am so happy to have my dear, dear, dear friend, Jocko with me from Winning by Design. And Jocko, you gotta say, hey. Hey, everyone, how are you all doing? Thank you for wherever you are. Uh, I'm excited, I'm pumped. This is, after all, quite a, a time, quite a time. I think there's a Chinese saying that as a curse, they, they mean it, that you may live in interesting times. So I don't know. <laughs> We do live in interesting times. We do here, and I mean the SaaS world. I don't even mean geopolitics. I'm just meaning the SaaS world. We are like, it's on, people. It's on. It is on. It is on. So let me let me do a quick, you know, Jocko and I go way back. We both founded our companies around the same time, winning by design and sales. So we're both completely aligned, our teams, on helping organizations boost their effectiveness and efficiency. We love what we do, as you'll be able to tell today. And Jocko is the co-CEO of Winning by Design. Jocko, just for folks that don't know you, I got to think everyone here knows you. Maybe give us a quick just minute or two on Winning by Design. Tell us about the organization. Tell us about yourself quickly. Sure. Uh, I'm the founder of Winning by Design. I started the company in 2012, primarily because I believe that the way how sales was conducted and the way how I saw it, they were not matching up. I worked with large customers, like you know, a, a, a big customer of mine was Scott Watson, CTO of Disney, uh, executives at AT&T. And the way that they were buying from me had nothing to do or had very little to do with pitching and arm twisting and negotiation tactics and all that. It had everything to do with just helping your customer to become successful. And I found, uh, I found there was a need for a voice in the market that would speak on behalf of the customers and help them to buy rather than helping salespeople to sell. So that's what the fundamentals are of winning by design. Now, coming into SaaS, I noticed that the SaaS model is very conducive to that behavior because if you don't deliver, the customer will stop buying from you, right? And so that's why I focused early on and starting in about 2008, I started to focus on SaaS. And uh, yeah, as a result, uh, we, today we're about 100 people, big company. We launched some of the biggest companies in the world, DocuSign, Dropbox, you know, a whole slew, HashiCorp. And um, we're doing it. And I think we're known for our passion and energy that we deliver it with. Boom. We have a fabulous partnership. We're so grateful for it. You know, it's the combination of winning by design and sales. So it just delivers amazing, amazing value to organizations. But today, you know, Jocko and I got together, you know, a couple months ago and started thinking, what should we focus, you know, our discussion on when we come together? Because we haven't been together in a while. And, and you know, 2023, crazy times. And it's, it's a very, very, very different world today than what it was last year, what it was, you know, 90 days ago, even 60 days ago. And so, however, one thing we know, we got to keep selling. We got to keep prospecting. This is for sure. But Jocko and his team at Winning by Design have rewritten the prospecting playbook. It's incredible. The insights that we're going to talk about today. And so today we're going to talk about what does prospecting, what should it look like? 
What could it look like? What does great look like today? Jocko's got a bunch of amazing tips today to share. And we're also going to talk about an amazing announcement of our two companies where we're bringing the Revenue Academy and specifically the prospecting courses and all the courses inside of Salesforce. And we're delivering a joint solution to our, to our joint customers. And so, but prospecting, are we ready to start, Jocko? I would love to set a little bit of the stage. And Eli and I, we agreed that although we we went yesterday and we said what we wanted to talk about, we wanted to keep it very informal and very, um, so you're going to find it. So I'm going to share my screen a little bit. And I want to, a few months ago, I wrote an article called the sweet spot of the eye of, in the sweet spot of the eye of the storm. And what that article is all about, it, you know, like it tells us um, that what was going on down here in the market that that is just the beginning okay we're the market that we experience today the storm svb we're just in the eye of the storm the second part of this storm is coming and this second part is going to tackle layoff is going to tackle churn and so what you're going to see down here i'm going to go to layoffs.fyi and if i click on layoff charts and so on and so forth go down here to that chart you'll see here the layoffs in the tech industry that occurred, okay, on the right. If you compare that to example here on the left, those were the layoffs that we saw uh, during the COVID. And you see the tech layoffs are significantly more intensive uh, this time, right? Yeah. Okay, now the second thing I want to point to you, these licenses in the SaaS industry, many of us are selling to other SaaS companies in the industry. The SaaS industry, the reason, one of the reasons why it grew so fast is because we were selling to each other. These licenses that have churned down here are going to churn in your revenue. We are right now digesting Q3 of 2022 and starting Q4 of 2022. That means that the lion's share of the churn still is to come. Okay, now why is this important to us? Because why are you we... painting a doom and gloom world for us, Jocko? Yes, <laughs> why I do that is the following. If growth is not going to come from expansion, because those seats are churning, all the focus will come to acquisition. The focus is gonna be, can we, sales professionals, can we help overcome not only the market, but the setback in the churn? That means that it's game on for the next six to, six to nine months. It's game on. And yeah, you know, like, I don't wanna look at people, I don't wanna think about like, oh, I can't hit my targets. Targets happens at the back end. I yeah. want you to see that this is the time to develop proper skills to get going. What we will do over the next six, six to nine months, I want to say is like, I now feel like I'm, I'm like, like I got Russell Crowe me. What you will do in the next six months will echo into eternity. Okay, that's a little dramatic. But it <laughs> well, will what last, we will do. It will last for five years. What we learn as, a, as an industry over the next six to 12 months is the same that Eli and I learned during 2008, which took us, it would last a decade for us that knowledge, right? So for all of you who weren't there during 2008, this is the time, this is the moment. And the next six months, it is, it's gonna be game on. And, so and, and, and so prospecting and yeah. front of the funnel activity is so critical if we wanna move into ex ex acquisition mode and wanna build new relationships, I think, um, Listen, you and I are both prospectors. You know, I think uh, you, you call us chief SDRs, which I absolutely subscribe to that. But I think it's important. You know, you have amazing insight. We both have some great insights because we get to work with some of the greatest companies in the world. What do you think has changed with prospecting, you know, right now? What's changed? What's different? I think that we are kind of we are coming out of a mode where doing more was the, pro, the predominant way of doing things. We use tools to do more. We use lists to do more. We use our efforts to do more. And the do better is the time frame that we're entering. And so if you previously need a thousand leads, a thousand uh, uh, numbers to call and a thousand email addresses to send to, to get 10 leads, you now should think about how am I going to get 10 leads out of a hundred leads or out of 50 leads. Yeah. And you're not going to get that out of the volume. So you got to do it out of the quality of them. Uh, speaking to C-level officers all day long, um, they say, we're still spending. We were on the last week I was... Um, at the Pavilion CMO conference. And there were a bunch of uh, PE and VC leaders said it like, look, we're not telling our companies no longer to stop spending. We're telling them to spend, but spend on things that matter. Spend on the campaigns that are working on. And so money is still there to be had, 
But you gotta, you gotta think quality in this case and not quantity. Do better, not do more. So we absolutely, people are spending. There, there, people are spending money on, I love what you said, on things that matter. So can you connect the dots for me? How, how, how do I focus on quality over quantity and really kind of go deeper on that point you make? Because you're giving some great recommendations. Focus on what matters. What, what, what's an example of like, you know, quality over quantity? Okay. I'm going to point and again, you know, probably I can show you and do a little demo here in a second as well. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to um, show you what quality is and how you bring up a quality uh, understanding, right? And, and, and what, do, where does that quality come from? And so one of the quality measures that I'm going to show, Eli, let me bring up your name, make sure it all works. Go ahead. And while you're doing that, just, just so I'm clear, right? You're basically saying, you know, we want to, we want to dial back the volume of activity and, and really focus in on activity that's going to hit right for the people that, uh, that will ultimately be making these buy decisions. I think I'm seeing, I'm seeing in the feed here, as you're getting this up, I'm seeing that the same tools that promise cutting through the white noise are being used by everyone. The okay. same tactics, the same tools. And by the way, chat GBT will be the same thing too, right? Everyone will have access to the same resources and tools. So you got to continue to focus on quality, quality, but you're going to give us an example. I love it. Okay. So I'm opening up my, my, my browser and writing an email right now. What I want to want you to point attention to is that lower right thing down here. You see that on the right thing? It says be casual. Now I'm going to type in, I'm going to type Eli Cohen in. Okay. My sister now recognizes that as Eli Cohen. And it says, if I want to talk to Eli, I'm going to be brief. And so I'm going to, and I'm going to say it's like, um, Hello. How do you know I want to be brief? How do you know I used to be brief? Mr. I'm going to show you that in a second. Hello, Mr. Cohen. Um, I've recently uh, sent you sent you an email, email, blah, 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 blah. I blah. love it that you're doing this live. Want oh, my to God. to do a demo. Um, can I send you a link or something like that, right? Let's say I'm doing this, right? So what you see yeah. down here is I, I want you to understand this. I want you to think there's three tools that you have, okay? And I want you, I'm going to use three different examples. Tool number one, think of as I'm writing, I have Grammarly. And Grammarly, I download it and it fixes my content so I'm, I sound better, right? Yeah. Then what we have in the advanced world, we have chat, chat, uh, chat GPT. It allows me to generate stuff. I say like, hey, write me something, right? And then what you'll see down here, is a counselor, which is called a lane assist tool, okay? And so now what I'm gonna do with the lane assist, when I pull it out, this particular tool, many of you may know it as Crystal or Crystal Knows, it starts to counsel me. It tells me what I need to do with Eli. It tells me what I need, what I can say and what I cannot say and so on and so forth. So if I send them an email, it gives me a particular advice to that email and that the email advice can change. So if I change the name from Eli, and I'm, for example, I make it Dominique Levin, right? My, co my CEO of my company. When we see Dominic, it tells me like, hey, do when you write to Dominic, focus more on summaries rather than in deep. Keep the conversation love focused, this. right? And so what this is, is doing better. Look, if I only have like 50 emails to send instead of, of a thousand, I'm going to do better. I want to make sure that my email lands better. And now in addition to what it does, that, you know, like what you'll see is that it will give you some, obviously you see Grammarly text editing me. It will start giving me recommendations on how to approach this email. This doing better is the world that we are living in. We need to think about doing better as an example. Doing better means use that one email that you get, okay? Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm gonna la launch another one. I'm gonna bring one, another one up that uh, might have, but this is an example of doing better. I'm now gonna look at my connections and I see if I can find it quick enough. Um, Thank you for it. those of you in the chat that are answering the questions. Appreciate it. Jim is answering the question of Chris, what's this tool? And yeah. someone's Elaine assist and, and, and Jim came in with the Chrome extension. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think what you're seeing here is some amazing innovation on how you can be smarter about how you prospect using some of the modern tools like Lane assist, like chat GBT and some of the other ones that Jocko is going to bring up. We'll get to the question of how can you get everyone following the same processes and really mastering these techniques. We'll get there in a minute, but let's just really see this in action a little bit more. Wow, okay. keep going, Jocko. Yeah, so what I want to do next is I want to show you now, if, if in this same realm, like like how, if, if Crystal helps me, 
right? And it helps me do better. How am I going to use ChatGPT? So I'm gonna share and I'm gonna show you what I do with ChatGPT. Now, look, how do, where do I start this conversation in, in, a, in, a, in a good way? Well, I'm remember, gonna, we're talking about quality over quantity. And I, I, I want you to think of the following, right? Like, like many of you kind of like know what ChatGPT is and I kind of like know what it is, but I, I don't get it until I really start doing. So, right, you know, like, so I, I got to show you by doing, I can't explain it to you. So I'm going to say down here, right? I type this in, what are the top 10 SaaS companies, right? Now, I do not know if they are the best companies I want to go after, right? So I'm saying, okay, now I'm going to start. And this is what I want everybody to understand. When people say you got to modify your prompts, right? And, and stuff, what is that? What, what do you mean you got to modify your prompt? What is prompt? Like this concept, for most of us, it's like out of this world. So I wanna, wanna show you what it is. So I, I just typed in what are the top 10 SaaS companies, okay? Now what I wanna know, right, is like, hey, um, what is, I'm gonna type it out, what is the percentage of marketing and marketing and sales cost as a percentage of, as a, as a percentage of revenue, okay? So it. what is the, the marketing and sales cost? What is the, okay, so I'm see what I'm sure they're doing. gonna get the voice diction in there what soon is, too, right? They'll yeah, get the voice they, they already do that. But you know, like, what is the marketing and sales cost, a percentage of revenue for Salesforce, right? Let's see what if they, if they get, as an arrow, yeah, they give you like, yeah, 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 it's public information. Yeah, they tell you yeah. their disclaimer. This disclaimer, right? But here it goes. Um, total of revenue for this year is 21 billion, 6.5, 30% of the revenue, right? Okay. What I now figured out, I just figured out something. I figured out that what is the percentage of markets as a, of revenue works, right? So now I'm going to take that sentence. This, what I'm showing you is how you create better. I'm not creating that. Of the top 10 SaaS companies, okay? I'm now modifying this. And gives us a disclaimer, you know, don't use my information for, for betting. So Jocko, like, let's just take a moment. You're an SDR. And you've got an account, or you've got a, or you're an AE, or you're a VP sales, but you've got a list of accounts, and now you want to figure out because what you're doing here is you're researching the account, right? I'm and, researching and the account. I'm trying to figure out. Look, I have don't have a thousand to go after, but I may my my management may have given me fifty to go after, and I need an angle, and I learn from what my products is in case of winning by design. We go after the percentage of marketing and sales cost. So somebody that spends, for example, 47% on the marketing is, uh, is a better target for us than somebody who spends 17%. And there's an angle on both. I shouldn't say that, right? But and and but, but just just kind of explain a little bit further. So why would a company that has 47% or 50% or 54% ratio be a better target for someone trying to improve efficiency? There's a leading because the question. client acquisition cost is too high. And, yeah. and they therefore, you know, they're losing profit and therefore the stock price is coming down. So, and we know about 40%, you know, if you spend more than 40% of marketing and sales and you're a sizable, AKA a public company, yeah. that's not healthy. And so we know all that. And then, you know, like we, we bring that up, right? And so now what you'll see is the top 10 SaaS companies. Oh, I wrote it, CS companies, but okay. Now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep refining this, right? Of the top 50. But can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. So how long do you think it would have taken you to create that list of 10 items right there with those percentages? Had you not had chat GBT? Oh, this is my point. This is like manual looking up in everyone's Q, 10Q and, and, and public statements, right? So yeah, you know, like it, it takes me a long time and in order to do that. And so now I'm asking for top 50 and it gives me a certain message, right? And so it gives me the averages or something like that. Like I start to hone in. This level of prompt writing is when you learn how to do better. And all prompt writing is, is know how to word your question. And you start off very simple. Start of what do I do with one company? What do I want? Do I get the right data? And then you start entering that prompt bigger and bigger. Now, I want to show you what that did, right? And uh, I'm going to point out to you at the end of this, at the end of all this, you know, like I, I started to, uh, to see certain metrics, right? And then based on those metrics, well, I found my leads that I wanted, right? Yep. I plopped that into a spreadsheet. David Spitz from Benchite came to the rescue. And then I put, you know, like I went a different route, right? I not only digested it and sent it to my own MDs, I wrote a brief post about it. A brief post that I shared the results that I pulled from chat GPT, right? I wrote a post about it. 
Now what I have down here, I have people talking, conversations. I suddenly am now created a piece of content out of public information. This is pure public information. And I created it myself. I didn't steal somebody else's content, right? I plopped yeah. it again with Dave Spitz's help. We plopped it into a little diagram. We created some intelligence around it. Now, I'm not expecting every SDR to do this. We call this super SDR stuff, right? And I'm the super SDR at this company as is, is Eli at his company. Who's the super SDR at your company? Who's doing that? Who is, at your company is doing something like this? Because if you're not, somebody needs to be doing this. And in this case, I'm the founder of the company, so I have, have, have the ability to do that. But if not me, is your head of R&D doing this? If you're not publishing this content, you're not going to get the right leads. And I can show you the profile. Let me see if that, that works, right? Impressions. I'm now analyzing the impressions. I can see what the job titles are. Look, founder, co-founder, account executive, and CEO. I got 2,000. 5,000, I got 8,000, 9,000 C-level officers working with this content. Yeah. Okay? Next step. Are you ready for the next step, Eli? Always. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody down here, if you see somebody interacting, start a conversation. I tell my MDs, if you see a CXO conversing here, folks, this is your, this is your meeting room right now. And in this meeting room, 50 to 100 people are, are engaged, right? Eli made it. Thanks for the analysis. There's no other M MD jumping in on this conversation right now. Thanks for that data, super interesting. I need more time to adjust. Yes, if you're an MD selling to Eli right now, you could right now here, hit reply. Eli, uh, I'm like you, I also need the time to digest. Uh, however, I did this and this and found this link of con content information here, find it. You send that email in the, this is a meeting room of 200,000 people right now, of which there are how many comments? 78 people doesn't include my comments back. So And it doesn't people. include the repost. The repost have its own comments on them too. So it includes there are 80 conversations going on down here on this topic. You think that, that you only can have to pay this post. I'm going like, anybody can join this conversation, folks. This is a common forum. And that means that any day that you're on LinkedIn, there are thousands of these conversations to take place. All you need to do is find where the conversations are taking place that relate to your topic and then please, pretty please, with sugar, on, with sugar on top and a little cherry, do not pitch your product. Do not, it's not the right thing. The steps to do this is as follows. Number one step, acknowledge whoever starts the conversation. Yep. Be relevant to them, give them some information. Hey, based on what you, the question you asked, I found the answer for you, here it is. And then kindly afterwards, send a LinkedIn request to connect. Let that sit a week, two weeks, let all these conversations sit, re-engage the person, say like, look, hey, I found another piece of information and slowly develop that. You do not attack a CRO overnight. Like, hey, by the way, I saw you, right? Here's the right solution for your problem. Our product is this, while I have you, boom, boom, boom. Be, be thoughtful. It is okay to be direct, by the way. I do appreciate when people are direct and I do like giving a quick yes or no answer. So there are cases where I go, like, if I say, I need, what was that tool that you just demoed? It is crystal. Here's the link if you want to buy. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> that is a good answer. But don't jump in on these conversations, you know, like, and, and, and particularly start tagging people. Like Jocko, that. But, yeah. amazing. Let's, let's come back to video. So, so okay. I, I got to recap because you just shared a ton with us. And it feels like it's an MBA in a box, modern prospecting. You know, I wonder if people were expecting you to talk about cadences and emails and voicemails. You know, that was prospecting last decade and prospecting last year with tools that we all know and love. Uh, well, tools that we know. I don't know if we love them anymore because sometimes we don't get through the noise. Let, we got it. Like, that's just kind of, you're talking about being smarter, moving faster, using modern tools like chat GBT, you showed, I love it, how you could take content that you've done research on, publish it on, on either to a public channel, like a LinkedIn feed, or even to a private group, which is even better. And you've shown how you can create a space where you're a thought leader and you can have people comment. And then, by the way, if you have a big team, your team can go in there on the feed and they can start commenting. And the best thing you said was you gave us very specific advice on engaging 
Pro wow, this is the new playbook. Okay, so correct me here. Like, what did I miss in your in your new modern prospecting playbook? Look, I think that overall, what, what, I, what I want people to be, and I think is I want people to be authentic. I want people to provide value. I want people to be uh, contextually aware of the situation. Authentic means be you, right? Like, don't try to be somebody that, that you're not. Contextual means if I'm a CFO and, I, and you're selling to CFOs and I just noticed you that we, you know, like that we are, uh, we lost our SVB bank account or something like that, right? Then correlates to that topic. Provide value means send me something to help me in the interest of me, not in the best interest of you, right? I trust that if you provide me with in best interest of me, that I'm completely interested in over time and in the numbers provide interest back to you, right? That's the concept that that works. And that works anytime. I want to give you one more and I'll give it verbally because it's easy enough for you. And yep. for all of you have LinkedIn and all of you have networks. All of you, when, I'm sorry, when you sit, what is it called? The porcelain throne? Is that what Americans call it? When you are in the bathroom doing whatever you're doing in the bathroom, I don't care what you're doing in the bathroom, uh, right? Oh my you God, sit, you're you going there. there. You sit there, you go to your connections. There is an offering on the LinkedIn that indicates what are recent events of your network? Job promotions, yep. birthdays, and anniversaries, things like that. What I want you to do at least once a week or one, yeah, at least once a week. Well, I mean, once every two weeks at least, but probably once a week. I want you to go to your networks, see anybody who's promoted and simply send, simply send. It's going to cost you like, like two minutes. Send them the following note. Congratulations on the promotion. That's it. You know, now I want you to think about what happens, okay? Here's what happens. Three weeks from now, you need to reach out to that person. And that person, and you now ask for a demo. That person looks at the threat and sees that the last message they got from you was congratulations for the promotion. They don't think it's like, oh my God, here I got a cold color again. They look back and say, oh, well, they kind of wish me happy promotion earlier and I forgot to respond to that. And they go like, they're a little bit more positive tainted. If you do that, and in your network, or let's say most of you have networks of 2,000 to 3,000 connections should be an easily achievable. That means if you do that every week, if you divide that, right? Like most people yeah. are, that, you, that you have within six, six months of doing this, you will have probably close to 500 people that you wish promote good promotions that are starting to give back to you, that are starting to turn around. That small effort, repetitive over time, big impact. When I do Huge. this- let's I, just- Let's talk about it for a second because I totally subscribe to that. I love it. Listen, you, you've covered a lot. Let's just take a moment. Everybody, everybody is loving this fresh perspective on prospecting. So at least we're delivering on the promise of providing fresh new insights on prospecting. We will talk. A lot of people are saying they want to turn that 15 minutes into a training program, into a training huddle in saleshood. And Jocko, we'll talk to them about how we've already done that for them. And we'll show you prospecting for impact in saleshood in a minute. But as I recap, we talked about being smarter, working faster, quality over quantity, which I think that is going to be a big shift for many of us. We talked about modern ways to do research, modern ways to do content creation, content sharing, content engagement. I love it. I love it. I love it. What else do I have here? And then you talked about relationship building. So why do you think it's so important for either, you know, for all of us to be smarter about relationship building uh, with people that we may or may not sell to them right now. What give, give us quantify it for us a little bit, or, or give us a little give us a little more color on that because it's so important, and I don't want to overlook that point. Okay, let's say the following. Let's say that you're you're in the middle of a highway in your local area, uh, twenty miles out of of anywhere, right? You're in the middle of a dark road at night. And you can make one or two few, uh, maybe one, maybe two f uh, phone calls. Who do you call? Many of you will call a parent, a brother, a sister, some family member, right? And why do you do that? Because you trust them. Because you trust that in a moment of need, like, look, I'm going to turn to people I trust. Now, what is happening is the world that you live in right now, that we all live in, is overwhelmed with people we do not trust. I pick up my cell phone, right? I pick up a phone call. I may have a spam. I mean, I don't even pick up phone calls any longer, right? I just like, I don't recognize the number, don't pick up. I can't click on a link in an email. 
UPS is sending me text messages that my shipment is delayed. I can't even click on that, right? Like I can't yeah. trust anything any longer, right? And so we live in this semi-protected world. So when you establish and build a relationship with a customer and you wish them, you know, certain of these certain things, you congratulate them when they, you know, like when they promote, you wish them good luck when they change jobs. When you see this happen and you develop this small track record, that tells yeah. them this is a human being I'm dealing with. And that human being is taking an interest in me. And as Dan Adams told me, like, do not ask people to take an interest in you if you cannot give them and take interest in them. Take interest in them. That level of trust. Now, when is this needed more than any time? In 2023. Because there's so much stuff going on that many people are going to rely on somebody like you that is listening to this who provides them of insight that they can trust. And this is your opportunity this year to create that quality signal. Send them that report. Send them the research report. My advice to you, have 10 assets, 10, list of 10 simple assets that as it relates to your job, provide great value to your customer. If you don't send, you know, like 10, 20 LinkedIn messages a day with that asset to somebody to help them with a problem, you're not doing it right. Like that's gifts. You're giving knowledge. And you know yeah. what? Here's the beautiful thing. It doesn't even need to come from your company. Better yet, if it doesn't come from your company, it's even more valuable. The fact that you took an effort to find a piece of article that related to that problem that you send them. It's like, that wow. is, You're right? just, this is, I, 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 first of all, I think we've come up with something and it's Jocko's trust currency. And I think we need to figure out how we help the world understand the value uh, of trust, because it's not about getting the meeting today. It's not about getting someone to pick up your call today. Well, that's important to do, but it's about establishing a long-term relationship with someone. And you've really articulated that beautifully. Trust currency, people like it. That's really, you, you hit a nerve there. I think uh, with me personally, I, I I love it. I love it a lot. Trust. I, I just want you to understand that if you start spamming somebody with that, that's doing the opposite, right? Spamming somebody with 20 messages, asking them directly without any interest. Do you want a demo? Right. All that stuff that is doing the opposite. And, and therefore, you know, like, so, so think about it. And I, you know, like, obviously, um, I believe that many of you who are in your, who are either building a career or are in your career. The thing that I don't want to overlook, Eli, what, what I want to, to, to shout to the, to the rooftops, to the people on this call, but I want them to quote me on this. Yeah. So that they feel that when they are telling management, it's not them telling management, it's me telling your management. If your executives are not involved in generating at least one, two leads for you every month per executive, they're not doing it right. Your role is not to be the sole provider of SQLs. Your role is to coordinate, coordinate generation of SQLs or any other form, whatever term you may call it to leads. So, I'm just, I, uh, yeah, I'm more than welcome to send to you my message I'll, I'll, uh, on Slack that I sent to my team. Folks, I got 5,000 executives. Why is none of you texting me that you want to get in touch with someone, right? And I got, oh, okay, here. And don't send me a list of 200 in this case, right? Give me a list of like, hey, here's five or 10 accounts. Cherry pick three of those that you can help me with. If you are not coordinating your executive's effort to help you generate SQLs, you're not doing it right. Yeah, we are super and, SDRs. And and just a, a couple of questions: uh, sales qualified leads, right? Someone's asking what an SQL is. It's uh, marketing qualified lead, sales qualified lead. You know, there are a whole bunch of terms. Basically, warm introductions to executives who could potentially demonstrate interest and maybe could become a customer is in English, right? Like, let's take the SQL, MQL out. I, I so what does that mean? Like, hold on, are you saying? That like CEOs and general managers and VPs, they gotta they gotta put their SDR hat on every day and help out. At least, well, I'm saying at least across a month, not every day, but you know, at least like a half an hour, an hour during the month. If your company is in dire need, which everybody is for leads, right? The churn is coming. You know, the 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 the, the post sale is yeah. not the price the growth. Then what am I supposed to do? This all by myself? No. And I tell you, and we see this uh, every day, if you reach out to the CEO or to an executive, SVP, EVP at your company, and says like, hey, you can help. The best leads 
the best and the warmest leads are coming from existing customers that because of the trust factor, right? Hey, a VP of engineering may have worked with another VP of engineering at, at five, six, seven, eight other companies. Well, can, can, can they introduce us over there? This coordination of lead generation is the role of the SDR and do not yeah. feel like you stand all by yourself for it, right? And, and by the way, it builds on your trust theory because if you have an executive that has relationships with certain other execs and other companies that you're trying to sell to, and they've got, you know, a warm relationship, they maybe work with them, maybe whatever it is, they will trust them more, right? Okay. If you work for a startup, you need to look at, and you need to know who are my top VCs. Then you go to the VCs. Who in the portfolio of the VCs can we sell to? These board members, I'm again, I'm sitting them, I sit in, in at the CMO conference of Pavilion last week and the board members go like, look, we hardly ever get the request for an introduction. We don't understand why we're here to help. We have all these companies. Tell us who you want the introduction to. Now, I'm not saying that you should send a list, you know, like of, in that case, I would do the following. I would assign, if there's a group of SDRs, let's, let's say a yep. group of six with a manager compile a, a list and send that to the VC, right? Say like, hey, we would ask for your help. Here's an aggregated list of, of accounts yeah. that we want to look for, right? Make it simple and don't have like seven SDRs reach out, but you know, you can propagate that message nicely to your VC and they can jump in. And, and, and ghost write a note, have, have a little bit of, of, of purpose to it, be meaningful. Let them, you know, change it into their... No, I think that's super smart. And so whether you're talking about VCs, board of directors, an executive team, you know, a sales and marketing leader should be consolidating a list of top ICP, ideal customer profile accounts. And that should be shared with executives. And then there should be a quota, you know, that you're going to own how many accounts you're going to do outreach and how many of these. And who do you know, right? Who do you know? You can connect some dots there and, and then boom. And, 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 and this, and I believe that this is helpful to all the managers, the executives that are on this call as well. I saw there were a bunch of CROs on this call today that joined as a bunch of heads of ops. Is I, you know, like, look, I'm going to explain to this as, as a runner, right? You know, yesterday I had to run and uh, I had to do some uh, workout. Now, most people, they hate running. Why, dude, I got to go out and I got to run five miles, right? Like, man, that's like, like a lot. I go like, no, 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 five miles. Let's assume that we're going to do 10 minutes warm up. And let's assume that we're going to do like five minutes of exercises. And then let's do, and last night I won an 800 on, uh, two, two loops and one loop easy. Then two loops fast, one loop easy. And every loop I go fast, I go faster and faster. What am I doing? I'm, this big number of five miles becomes subsections and each subsection has a goal in itself. You have, let's say, uh, as whether you're a manager that dashes out a lead quota or whether you are a rep that has a lead quota. You add this up on a year. And let's say that you got to generate, I pick a random number, 200 leads per year. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to allocate 20 of those leads I expect to come from my executives. 10 of those leads I'm expected to come from my board. 30% of those leads I'm going to expect to come from content generation. And so I bring that number down and then I'm going to measure it. Well, if I didn't hit my 200 leads because you know my executives didn't contribute, look, what can I do? Like, look, I gave them, I sent the message, nobody responded. Now you're thinking, you are creating categories of leads and, and a generation, and you are assigning those to different people. Your role is to coordinate lead generation. Don't see it as one gigantic number. See it as small numbers, and each of these numbers has a metric associated with it and a source associated with it. Yeah. Jocko, there's a great idea here. Jocko should write an open letter to all C-levels. I feel like we've got a, a new LinkedIn post coming up with the message on, on this on LinkedIn. And then, and then everybody can go in and tag their C-levels. Check this out. This should be how C-levels can help support the pipe gen and building new relationships with new prospects. Genius idea. It's going to happen, it. right? We're going to make it happen. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So, so listen, you've shared... Some tips, I know you've got a lot more and we can keep going and going and going. We've shared tips on research. We've shared tips on content sharing, content creation, content engagement. We've shared tips on, I'm looking at my list of relationship building, building trust, even reimagining and rethinking the shape of our email, the channels where, where excuse me, of our leads, where they come from. Beautiful, beautiful. So now the question is, folks are asking like, hey, how can I learn more? And so let's take a moment and let's talk about you know, you, you, you mentioned in one of your LinkedIn posts, you said, you know, you're cranking out 
new content, new trainings every 60, 90 days to stay ahead of the curve. Can you talk about your rationale and building your sales training and the revenue academy a little bit? And then I'm going to show it, guys, because I think you got to see it to believe it. Yeah. I, he, here's the thing that I want you to realize as I lead into that. Between 2012 and 2020, it was the golden age of SaaS. Pretty much whatever you stuck into the ground, you poured some water on it, it was growing. And it's almost like you didn't even have to pour water on it because it was raining so much wealth that it automatically grew. And so yeah. in, a, in a situation like that, you don't really see a big change. So in those days, literally as a skill level, we didn't see a radical change if skill needed, right? I mean, like, hey, we saw the movement from called phone calls to called emails. We saw that, right? And we see now the trend towards more Slack, so to more uh, instant style messaging. As 2020 occurred, we saw things accelerate in particular one direction towards the online. So suddenly, you know, like events were less accessible and so on and so yeah. forth. What we are finding today is that in this, in, you know, in this current moment in time, changes are occurring so ra rapidly that the training of like a year ago may no longer apply. Chat GPT. I don't know if you know, folks, we're talking about a product that's less than 90 days old, 90 days old, right? It came yeah. out on December 3rd or 4th or something like that. So I don't know, but that's like, imagine it changed everything. I mean, and I wonder, about, I wonder how many SDRs and AEs and professionals really understand how to use it. You know, no, not that that's, why I'm trying to, that's why I'm trying to demo it. Right. I want the concept, understand the concept. And then, it's, it's relatively easy, but I don't want you to feel, feel hindered by it. But this current situation is changing so fast that training of two, three years ago no longer applies to today's world. It's, when, you, when I literally would show you a training from two to three years ago, you go like, wow. Why is that Doesn't not work anymore? Why Doesn't is that apply. not in black and white? Why, why, why? That should be black and white. That's so old. It probably was displayed on a TV screen, right? Like, yeah. So, yeah. so like, and so what we need today is we need modern training that, that were lessons learned from 30 days ago, 60 days ago, 90 days ago. And so what we have started to see is like, we need, in, in this case, winning by design, we need platforms that can automate this training on the fly and that keep, and it keeps spinning up new training and keep spinning new content all day long and integrate that, right? That's what, we're, what we have been looking for. It's like, how can we get people this constant flow of new and latest tricks? That's one. The second thing I want also is super important as well, okay? Of course you can pull things from YouTube every now and then. And you have like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But all these things are not integrated with each other. One calls value, the other one calls impact. The other one says, go talk to this, uh, this decision maker, that decision maker. Like, it's like, dude, like you feel like you're opening up the kitchen drawer when you try to teach yourself on, on YouTube, right? Like it's so much, right? Like, like yeah. And so we go like, hey, we need to trust it partner. And obviously saleshood is the point down here, right? But what if we have a platform that is not just a YouTube video with a wild collection of videos, but rather is, a properly manicured, orchestrated learning approach that of which the concepts built on top of each other are not just like tacking on like a pirate ship. Let's put another mast on there, see if we can go faster. You know what? <laughs> let's put a dinghy on. Like you get this like behemoth thing built, right? We're going it's like, look, less is more. We want to make sure that it's properly curated. That when we provide you a lesson, it's been tested, it works. And then it goes out. And it's not some, I call them jokers, who just woke up that morning in the shower and figured out that the new LinkedIn post would drive another like 10,000 views on them and then start spreading some gospel that is absolutely not true, right? That doesn't help anyone. Then yeah. With that idea in mind, we believe that in this case, Eli and Salesforce would be one of those platforms. And I'd love for you to show some of the content. Like, uh, please, Eli, like, like feel free yeah, to demonstrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Listen, this is one of our big announcements. And thank you to the Winning by Design team, Sherry, yourself, everyone for the collaboration. We've been collaborating for years and years and years. And so what I want to share now is, listen, let's let's say, you know, you, uh, I, I, I want to take advantage. I want the prospecting with impact, prospecting with the enterprise. I want selling with impact. The Revenue Academy is world-class. Jocko and his team are continually updating it. But the power is, how do you integrate it in the context of your go-to-market? And so what you're looking at right here is saleshood. 
and, and you know, amazing purpose built all in one sales enablement platform, learning, coaching, selling. It's all in one. It's amazing. But I'm focusing right now. We created a page where we've taken the winning by design prospecting with impact course, and it's activated. And so you can see here, for those of you that are sales and customers, boom, we can activate this for you. That's one of the, uh, one of the offers that we're going to make, but here's a video by Dan, you know, look how beautiful this is, look how modern it is. Here's some great graphics that are available, explaining prospecting with impact. Here is a complete end-to-end -end certification program with the actual, you know, the badge that you can put on LinkedIn with your, with, and then check this out. Like Jocko said, Here's the organization, the curation, course overview, how great prospectors prioritize time, how to influence at all levels, how to research, how to apply research to call. So all that training that we talked about, he went through it. It's all here pre-organized. And then you've got all your assets, the blueprints, the playbooks. Jocko and his team have done amazing work here. And check this out. I'll just kind of go a level deeper for those of you that aren't as familiar with saleshood. You know, here it is, right? So here's an example of a lesson, how to apply research to calls. It's really organized beautifully. It's got instructions and, you know, intros by me and it's got unscheduled call. So here's some videos, right? Amazing video-based content. You know, you can, you can go faster. It's all transcripted, you know, so that way you can search for things. Beautiful, beautiful. But we love to teach people to learn by doing. This is the beautiful, this, yeah, that's Kevin Dorsey. This is the beauty between winning by design. And so like, it's one thing to have someone watch a video. It's another thing, if they're going to actually apply their lessons that they've learned in the video to uh, an unscheduled scripted call, shouldn't they actually write out a call? Boom. And guess what? We want people to practice, practice an unscheduled call, the who, the why, the with them. And then boom, you know, I can go into the system and I am in real time practicing you know, my I'm real time, I'm practicing, you know, my, uh, my pitch for an unscheduled call. And it's giving me real time feedback on the why, the who, my tone, my sentiment, boom, amazing. And it's giving me a score in real time. Now I clearly wasn't on message. I didn't meet the scorecard criteria, but the point here is we have created an end to end, an end to end system to bring to life all of the Revenue Academy course material. And here is the prospecting for impact. I'm going to stop sharing, Jocko, because like it's, I, I went quick there. Was it too fast, too slow? Jocko, feedback on my demo. How did I do? Look, here, when I see you do this, right, folks, and, and I think that this is, in a time like this, it's time for the professionals to come and play. Like, pick your example, whether you're old and you say Michael Jordan comes in in the fourth quarter and takes, give me the ball, let me shoot. Whatever your, your, you know, like your, your factor is that you get motivated by. This is the time, this year, when I see when you present the tool combined, I obviously really appreciate you integrating that with, with our content. We need professionalism to help. If we want to do things better than the platform you just demonstrated, the content, the learning experience, uh, grading yourself, all that. That's how you get better. And if you make a small improvement month by month, then coming out of summer, you're going to be fine. If you're just sitting here and you're going to, and you know, what we see many organizations do, you're going to say like, hey, because let me ask you this. This is what's going to happen, right? I want you to think this through with me. This is the natural outcome. Eli gave us option A. Here's option B. Option B is the end of Q1 results are coming in within like 48 hours and they're going to demonstrate we need more leads. Everyone also, manager is going to tell the person, write more emails. Now that person is saying like, dude, I cannot write more emails. So I got to create a volume of emails. So they just say like, instead of a hundred, send it to 500. Right. And that is not happening by one company. There's 35,000 SaaS companies in the world who are going to turn up the volume boop, to 11 to 12. Yeah. So this stream of knowledge, this stream of cold is going to hit over the next three, six, nine months. By the way, it has already started. Right. Yeah. So the noise is going to be tremendous. So people can try and figure out how to prospect with impact and to use the modern tools and to go through and do research in a modern way, engage with content the right way, leave the right kind of messages, either on LinkedIn or voice messages, write the right, like you could, you could try to figure it out, or we could go with someone that we trust who is Jocko and the ultimate in modern SaaS engagement for all roles in an organization. And uh, Jocko, just a couple mo more comments I'm going to make. And then we got to recap 
all the great stuff you shared. So for those of you interested, right? If you're a sales hood customer, you know, we can activate the revenue academy content inside of your system and you'll see it in our content marketplace, whether you want prospecting with impact, whether you want selling with impact. But we believe based on the data that, that we've seen from Jocko and based on what's going to happen in Q2, based on the pipeline coverage that we're hearing, one to one and a half X pipeline, everybody is needing pipeline and they're losing it. We believe prospecting is going to be the Q2 focus for the SaaS world. And so we're here to support. So if any of our, any of our customers want it, we'll work with you, talk to your CSN. And we're even including the prospecting with impact in our premium edition. Number two, if you're interested in, in addition to the content, you want some of the trainers and the coaches, the amazing people that will guide you to actually apply this. You know, you've got a couple options. There is a, co-hosted uh, open class that we're going to be uh, sending to you everyone in a note, which is amazing. Or some of you may want to have your own private classes where the content can be tailored to your specific messaging and your go-to-market. So you've got the library, you've got open classes, and you've got the private classes. Uh, and and that, those are with certified coaches that have all been certified by Jocko and his team and they're world-class. This partnership is world-class. That's it for the pitch. And and uh, and now let's move back to prospecting with impact and prospecting trends. Jocko, to you. Yeah, I think that if you're a sales an SDR team and and you work for a company, you're a sales development team, you're a group of AEs, you're a group of you know like an. Um, I, I want I want to bring a, a, you know closes up with a few message. As an yeah. AE, I expect you to generate your own leads. I do. I don't expect you to do your own cold calling, okay? Both are true. If you're a CRO and your uh, sellers are not doing their own lead generation, we need to figure out what's wrong. And generally what is wrong is they're not talking to customers. They're not working with customers. As an AE, I expect you to call at least on the phone. I'm okay with chatting, by the way. I, chat for me is a fantastic way to communicate, but I need a real-time conversation with at least 10 customers a week. And those 10 customers will introduce you to other customers and to other things. That's where your leads are coming from if you're in sales. Look, if you're four or five years in sales, then you generally have you know, at least 500, 600 connections in your network. And that means as each of them have two or three, we're talking about a network of 2,000 people in the industry, right? So like, that's where you network. All this, that is what the business is going to come from. My suggestion to you is, if we would do all this, first, let's try this, and then let's try that, and then let's try that, and let's try that. By the time we try all that, we're at the end of 2023. Divide and conquer. Okay, who on the team is going to do chat GPT? Who on the yep. team is going to work the conversations on LinkedIn? Who on the team is going to work with the executives? Who on the team is going to work with and create a list for our I would, Super smart. Up, I would divvy up the work, work in parallel. And I would say, is, okay, this, this, you know, like, let's go. Like, like, there's no hesitancy. If we fail, we fail together. If we succeed, now what we're going to get, we're going to get conversion rates on each of these one, right? Hey, you know what? The LinkedIn post, that was very scalable. We, we can do a lot more of that. Here's how you do it. That person now shares the best practice how to do it and trains the other ones on doing it. Now we start scaling out what to do. AE learns which markets uh, are really working, right? We got 10 AEs on the team, 10 sellers on the team. And one seller says, oh, and green tech is where it's at right now. The other says, oh my God, construction is, is dead and pharmaceutical is going up. And so now I'm going to get a series of different markets work together. Mm. There's a saying, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you need to go far, you got to go as a team. In this case, we got to go far. When it was Greenfield, go fast, grab, grab, yeah. grab. Now it is like lock elbows with each other. Therefore, bring the team together, do a workshop, start off with Q1, a Q2 with a workshop. How we're going to do this, apply some of these ideas, let some people start testing, demonstrate what's working. Three weeks from now, do an update on that workshop. Hey, we learned this. Keep doing that. Iterate, iterate, iterate. That's listen. You you you've also just highlighted the value of, of or the, the reason why we created the huddles and 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 the page that I showed you the way that we did because listen, it's this this it, there is no there is no silver bullet, 
There's no silver bullet right now. I love what you said. There are multiple different tactics that it's not clear which ones work better yet. However, by getting everyone aligned around those tactics and then testing them out and then having the teams collaborate, learn from each other and do that on a continuous basis, I think you'll ultimately figure out your playbook. So it seems, Jocko, like the playbook for prospecting in 23 is... You know, it's it's not quite defined, and and so uh, how would you describe the playbook for twenty three? Do prospecting better, playbook. Do better, better. Do better, better. Learn from each other, and, and, I, and I say and this really, on purpose. I want to make sure that what I'm not saying, I'm not saying do more better. I'm saying do better, better. Okay, it's a real big difference. A lot of well, people. Let's think, say it again. Do better. Better. What's the difference between do more better and do better better? Do more better is when we start using cadences because you can do a cadence, which is doing more, and then using a tool for that is doing that more better. What you got to learn is do better better. And, you know, by if we learn how to skill doing better, that's what we call sustainable growth and durable growth, right? Not scalable growth. Scalable growth is doing more and more and more of it, right? And so don't get me wrong. Tools like an outreach and a sales loft and, and all like that, right, are very effective and efficient tools. It's, the tool is not the problem, people. It's the operator that is putting the prompts into the tool that is the problem. Mm. So you can use these tools very well to do better, better. Obviously, they also allow you to do more. Right? We say it's like, hey, caution yourself, still use these tools, but use them with a better mindset. Jocko. Yes, thank you, Cassandra, for uh, and highlighting this. Uh, do more of what works is very similar to that. But I, what, what I'm trying to say there, uh, Cheryl, is what worked in the past is, is currently no longer working, right? So don't, don't do what worked two years ago, right? Do more of what yeah. worked two years ago. Do, do more of what worked last week and two weeks ago. So listen, oh, I love do better Jocko. best. Yes, Jen, I like that. Do better best. There you go. I Let's love take that. a moment. So Jocko, I just want to say, because we're getting close to the end here. And, and, and we'll have time for some Q&A, but I, I did want to just say, listen, thank you for spending time with us, for sharing some of these very advanced, yet relevant and practical and applicable and, you know, resources and tips and guides that will ultimately help everyone on this call, everyone listening, every one of our customers, every one of our joint customers to prospect better, to prospect better, to build better relationships to ultimately develop deals that are more targeted to the core problems they solve and ultimately close more deals and have a great Q2 and a great Q3. And it's our partnership here and the uniqueness of it that I think is what I'm very excited about because we're here to serve each and every one of you and take advantage of us together because us together is gonna to help you reach your revenue goals and the revenue outcomes that you need to achieve right now. And, and, and you know the content, and the training and the blueprints and the guides that are coming from Winning by Design are world class. And I'm just excited that we can activate it inside sales for everyone. Jocko, any final words? I am literally typing it out right now, but I, you know, based on the requests and with the large audience, I will write that message uh, to your to your CEO in the next two hours. And then, you know, like uh, making sure that you have some tools uh, that Eli and I discussed down here, and we'll, we'll make sure that everybody recognized it was out at the outcome of this session. Other than that, folks, uh, final message and you know, like as in front of an audience is this: We are very privileged. We have a very good life. Do not let it go to waste. Do something with it. Boom. So everyone, thank you for joining us today for this amazing prospecting, uh, 2020 prospecting in 2023 live session, and uh, you know. Down below, if you're watching the replay, there are some links uh, to the guides and to everything we talked about. Jocko, that's it. Everybody, thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Have an amazing 23. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.